The hardest part about this entire thing was drilling these holes out. I like it. I like it. Hey guys, today it's another hot day in Texas. It's currently 106 and I'm going to be installing the Stromberg Carlson CC255 trailer tray. In a previous video, I talked about installing this tray, it mounts to the front tongue, you can see here, and gives you a tray that that generator is going to get mounted to. I do have an Anderson weight distribution hitch attached to the trailer and I might need to remove it, but that's okay because I'm going to be changing out the hitch anyway. I'm going to be switching over to a way safe hitch and I'm going to make a separate video about that in the future. I'm going to have to remove this propane tank cover. The Anderson setup bolts right here and I can probably just leave it in place, but I'm not going to be using this hitch anymore. And I'm going to be just switching over to a standard hitch because I don't have the towing extension anymore. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave a link to that video down below. I used to tow this trailer with a 48 inch extension and I needed the weight distribution hitch for that. So I might just leave that hitch on there or I might take it off. We're going to see once I get started on the install. So I already opened the box, but I haven't actually popped the top off yet. Trailer tray model CC255. I think that's the only one they sell. At least that's all I could find on Amazon. We get the tray, supports, bunch of bolts, nuts and bolts. And well, it looks like that's it for instructions. Well, I'm gonna unpack this. Looks like during shipping, everything kind of got jostled around. Hopefully it's not too scratched up. That looks pretty good. All right, these are the main tubular supports. These are pretty beefy. All right, get these. Oh, I see. So these go around the frame and I don't know, something drops into it. We'll see. All right, these are mounting plates, I guess. Some more brackets. And this is a crushed box of nuts and bolts. All right, so we have all of our, our nuts and bolts. Uh, another L bracket. Some more metal brackets. Yeah, I think this goes with this and I may or may not need it. I think this is an additional support. Well, I gotta say I'm a little disappointed that there's no, no real instructions. They give you this diagram. So yeah, I don't think I need this front support, but we'll see. This trailer tray does seem to be one of the best on the market, at least that I could find, but their instructions are not great. One of the things that's frustrating is this side references the diagram on this side. So the only thing you can do is you have to read through and it says figure G and then you flip back over here and then you get to find G like, okay. And then you got to go back over. The least they could do is include it on two separate pages so that you can read one and reference the other. But anyways, I think this is pretty much all you need to look at. This tells you what to do and the approximate locations to put things. So I'm looking here. I see that these are the backing plates right here. We have upper and lower pockets. So these look like the longer pockets with more holes that go on the bottom here. And then the smaller ones go on the tray with these side plates. So I think what I'm going to start with is installing these bottom brackets with the bolts. I want to lay out all of my fasteners. Well, I think that's great. They put it on so that it's all put together. You don't have to find all the washers and nuts and assemble it yourself. Good on them. I like that. I think everything's here. I'm not going to count. I'm just going to assume because if I am missing something, I don't really care. I have spare nuts and bolts I can grab. It does not do a good job of telling you which fasteners go where, but I'm going to use my brain. These are carriage bolts and it looks like they're probably going to go right here. That would make sense to me. There's three slots here and there's six carriage bolts and it's these plates that go there. Something like this. It's 106 degrees outside and it is currently 93 inside. I'm going to do some of the pre-assembly inside and then I'll go bolt it on later. I can't tell you how much I like the fact that they pre-assembled the nuts and washers. 
saves so much time and aggravation. I'm just gonna put it through the square hole here, put a washer on the back side, and then a nut. And repeat the process. Pull out some ratchet wrenches. This part doesn't require any adjustment, so I'm just gonna tighten it right down. So for these nuts, I'm using either a 9 16 or 14 millimeter, basically the same size, pretty close. They've done a good job with this. The bolts are just long enough to engage the nylock, but they don't stick out any further than the nut itself, which is really nice. Now I'm just gonna guess on placement. We have the short ones up top and I'm just gonna put them somewhere in the middle just so I can get things pre-assembled a little bit. Based on what I have floating around, I think that these are the most likely candidates for that. So I'll take four of those. These are half inch, but a 13 millimeter will also fit. The opening is gonna face down. I'm gonna loosen these first. We're gonna have a washer on one side. Put a washer on the back side here, and I'll just start the nuts. I'm also trying not to scratch the paint off of the metal because that's gonna open it up to rust faster. This is just plain old regular steel, so it will rust. And I forgot one washer here. Put this washer on. Now I'm gonna just snug these up. I'm not gonna tighten them because I have to go reposition this outside. So same thing here. All right, so that's pre-assembled. The opening is facing down over here. It's still loose, but that's because I need to position this in a different spot once I actually have it assembled outside. Now I need to add these brackets to the front frame rails. So I'll go out and do that now. And I don't know which fasteners to use. It doesn't really tell me, it just says G. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna have to guess it's these. These would make the most sense, four of each. Okay, we'll do that. All right, I'm just gonna put these through here. All right, rest. Plates on the back side, and it looks like this is supposed to go against the frame rail, like flat like this. That'll balance it. Put my washers on. Put my nuts on. And these bolts are a little bit longer than they need to be to accommodate wider frame rails. And you can see the next hole that's available is this one. There'd be no point in going this low. I want to go up as close to the frame as I can. Same thing on this side. Go right through. Washer, nut. Drop the nut. Try it again. Drop the nut again. There we go. So it should look something like that. And I guess these aren't gonna be in the way at all. So I can just leave them for now. But I do have an issue over here. This battery box is in the way. Hmm. All right, so the camera's overheating in the sun. So I'm gonna have to move this. I think I'm just gonna slide it that way a little bit. So let me do that and I'll be back with you in a few. I got that unmounted. Get the battery out. Get a little bit of leaking going on. So now I'm just gonna move it back a little bit and see if I have enough space to mount that bracket here. I ended up having a nice long conversation with my sister, but well, I did that, I also got to remove the battery, got the tray off. 
I mounted these, and you can see the tray. I basically only had to move it, I don't know, an inch and a half or so. So it was here, now it's here, and that should be good. So I'm gonna put a couple of screws back in. I kinda wish I could reuse the old ones. But, uh, and then tighten this up. They're not torqued yet, but they're tight enough. They're not gonna move. And I measured from this corner right here up to the front on that side. And same thing from here to here on here. I did, for me, it's 29 and a quarter, just so it's even on both sides. Not that it really matters. So that should be, should be good. So I'm gonna re-secure this because I don't have any lights inside my trailer until I get this reconnected. So I'm gonna get this all back together and then I'll get back to installing the rack. I got the battery mounted again, just enough clearance. That should work nicely. You know, of course, now that I think of it, what I probably could have done is just notch this out and left it right there, but it's good enough. Anyways, on to the next step. All right, I have these upright supports. Just gonna put them in there. And then that will tell me how to mount the main plate. Now I kind of gave up following the directions, but this seems to make sense to me. I could actually move this back a little bit I think I might move it to say here. I don't need quite that much gap here. And then my propane is still accessible. And right now I'll just find center. I'll use this mark right here as center and I'll make sure it's directly over that. So kind of in the home stretch here, just gonna move those brackets, move these. I lost my tape measure. What did I do with it? Yeah, oh, right there where I left it. So we have a, call it six and a half inch gap. Might move it up two. Three inches split the difference, so that would then leave me with a three inch gap, which I'm comfortable with, because I do want to be able to get stuff through here. Power cords, hoses, whatever. I don't want it to be so close that it bumps into it if it wobbles at all. I don't think it will. This is exactly why I didn't tighten these. I mean, I could go all the way up, couldn't I? Decisions, decisions. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go all the way forward. Why not? I can throw it back up there and test it. If it's too much, then I can just move it again. So I moved it all the way forward and I still have a good, let's see, uh, two and three quarters. That's pretty good. I can get cords and water hoses and stuff behind there and I can get my, my propane, I'm sorry, I can get my generator cover on it. That looks pretty good. I think I'll do that. Now let me just quickly tighten up these screws and I'll move on to centering and securing it. I need to mark the holes and drill them so that I can put these bolts through. And I think that's all there is to it, I think. I'm gonna go out and double check though. I just wanna make sure I have all the steps done. It's very simple. It's actually a really simple install. I really wish that they didn't make me drill holes. It would be great if they had some type of way around that, but I can also understand why they do it. I have my drill and some drill bits. I'm gonna go mark those holes and then drill them and then finish the assembly. All 
All right, the instructions are asking for 3 8 hole, which is right here. My soapstone marker wouldn't write on it, so I just poked a hole with my, my knife in the paint. And now I'm hoping I can actually find it. Yep, there's one. There's another one. Okay, so I'm going to do this inside because I don't want to leave metal shavings all over the campground. I'm probably going to drill a pilot hole. One of the things I want to get in my trailer is a drill press. I don't have it today, so I'm going to do the best I can with what I got. Yeah, I think I, think I need a pilot hole. press. I think my 3 8 bit needs to be sharpened. I'm jumping up one size to a 25 64 This bit I don't think I've ever really used, so it should cut a lot better. Yep. Too well, actually. Drilling this is going to be a pain. If you have a drill press, use that. Uh, I'm going to skip the camera because I think this is going to take me like an hour. I have one, two, three, four, eight holes to drill in a round tube with no vise. I'm going to be at this for a while. So I'll check back in with you when this is finished. So I just drilled these bottom holes because I think I think the top holes I'm going to do outside. It'll be a lot easier. Okay, so that fits through. Loosely put these on. So I think I want to put that back on the top and hope that everything lines up. All right, I put some cardboard underneath to catch the metal filings. I'm gonna try to drill straight through. It'll save me a lot of work. All right, I made a big mistake. So as I was drilling this side, it walked up and I drilled my hole too high. And I think that I needed to use this to hold it in place. I mean, granted, I could have just drilled it in the trailer, but it's just so much work, so this is easier. So this is like a clamp. It's pre-threaded right here. And I will say that the instructions are pretty terrible. I think this is supposed to stop the rattling, but I'm going to use it as a way to hold the position while I drill. Made it through. Get my bolt through here. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, I am definitely gonna use this set screw here. That'll hold it. All right, done. Now I just gotta tighten these and we're good to go. 9 16 nuts. Gonna just tighten these up. 
good. If I need to, I can put that front bracket on, but I don't think I, I really needed it at all. I'd rather not, it's just gonna be in the way. But it's getting late, 7.30. So I think I'm gonna call it quits for today and then maybe I'll play with it tomorrow. So it's the next day and I got someone to help me throw the generator up on the platform. And it fits really nicely actually. Plenty of space and it's got these little uh, holes that I'll probably use to use a ratchet strap, something like that to secure it. I got to look at what the options are for that. It would be convenient to have something that was quick and easy to remove. Cause when it's running, I don't want it strapped down too tight cause I want these feet to dampen the vibration. It fits, I like it. However, I was giving some thought to how secure this is. See, you can see a little bit of wiggle. I think I will try to put this, this middle support on. The hardest part about this entire thing was drilling these holes out. I was trying to record it, but it was a little too frustrating. It took me about an hour to get these done. Now I did make a little mistake. You can see this pole comes up and it's flush with this top plate. But on this side, I messed up and I don't think it was seated all the way and you can see it's sticking down slightly. So it's off by, I don't know, an eighth, maybe a quarter inch. No big deal. Just something to keep in mind when you're doing this is to make sure that everything is kind of flush and level before you drill. Whoops. I still think they should have a, a system that doesn't require the customer to drill. It seems very challenging, honestly, for a, a, a home DIY install. So anyways, I'm gonna grab these parts and see if I can quickly put them on. So I have these parts. Let me get them over here. I gotta clean up a little bit. I finished up in haste yesterday. It was getting late and I needed to eat dinner. I'm gonna guess that these remaining four little bolts are for this setup. So I'm definitely gonna have to just look at it, go out there and put it in place and see how it's supposed to mount because I'm really not sure. I'm gonna bring all this stuff outside and we can figure it out outside. It's getting hot really fast and the sun's out. So I have a funny feeling my camera, which is actually just my cell phone, is probably gonna overheat in a couple minutes and die. So I might not be able to record this entire process. So I'm gonna guess something like this. Yep, that's what it looks like. It aligns actually perfectly like this. Three and four up. So I'm gonna put these bolts in ahead of time. Again, I'm very happy that they pre-assemble these. At this point, I'm, I'm kind of giving up on the directions. I find them cumbersome. They don't really tell you anything. And this is all pretty self-explanatory. I wish that they gave maybe some zoomed in views of what you're supposed to do. Tight enough. Putting a bolt in right here to hold it in place. And then down here, you can see that it just so happens to clear my frame on both sides so I can put the long bolt through here and use the support bracket on the bottom. All right, drop that through. Same thing to the other side. Put that in there just to hold it. All right, now this is a fairly long threaded rod with a nylock, so it's gonna take a while to get this screwed up here. All right, I'm gonna butt this up right against the tongue here and then try to get it centered before I tighten it. I'm go this way a tiny bit. All right, that looks good. 
I will more than likely trim this off a little bit. Got it pretty centered. You can see the gap here is roughly the same as the gap over here. It's a little off, but close enough. And then I just want to make sure that my upright is straight. I think I'm just going to pull it right to the front like this. I'm going to put the last bolt in here and then I'll tighten everything up. It's pretty rugged. That definitely made a big difference. No more bounce. I have plenty of room to get my propane tanks out. I may end up swapping out those propane tanks for a mini split. I'm not really sure yet, but it gives me plenty of room to work with. Definitely is going to increase the tongue weight. I think the next step is I need to figure out a way to attach it and put the cover on. So I got this champion cover I'm going to throw on there in a few minutes. I had some old ratchet straps in my truck, so I'm going to use these to go secure the generator. I don't like the fact that it's going to chafe. So I'm going to do some Googling on how I can do this. There might be a better way to do it, maybe a bracket. I'm not sure. This trailer tray definitely makes it easy to secure it to. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe I'll go up and around here. I'm not sure. I'll play with that. That'll be something I figure out over time. Now, I bought this not because this is Champion. In fact, I wish it didn't, but it was one of the highest rated covers, and it seemed to have everything I wanted on it, and it's designed to fit this generator. So I think it's a good match. vinyl coated cloth interior and it has the cinch cord which I really wanted and seems like excellent quality it has looks like zippers probably so you can access the top and fill it with gas or maybe I'm not really sure that I put zippers on it um, yeah great quality I'd say the one one negative I see is that they didn't they didn't fold the seam over so it kind of looks a little rough. Both sides, I'm not sure if you can see it. I wish they had folded that over, but it is a generator cover, who cares? I think I need to change the way the straps sit. All right, I'm taking advantage of this little notch and uh, get it secured this way. Now I should be able to get the cover to tuck where it's supposed to tuck. I'm able to cinch this up. It's pretty tight. I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit more, but I do have to take this off and play with the generator a little bit. Um, I don't know how it's going to survive the wind, but it's a fairly pliable vinyl uh, and, you know, it's going to sit and flap. Probably going to disintegrate. Um, oh, these are for the handles. It's so you can grab the handles. That's cool. I think that's pretty much it. I was actually really up in the air about getting this. I thought about just removing the propane tanks and mounting it directly to the, the tongue on the trailer. I read the reviews, people said it was really good. They said it was really sturdy, um, and I would have to agree. It's, it's much better quality than I thought it would be. I really don't like the instructions, but you don't really need them. The powder coat is very good, extremely good powder coating actually. And I like the fasteners, I think they did a good job with it. It's not wiggling at all anymore, it's actually just moving the whole trailer. This was worth installing. I, I can see how much of a bounce it would have going down the road, especially when you hit a, a large uh, you know, pothole or something. This would bounce a lot and I think eventually it could fatigue, but this really locks it in place. The overall design is excellent. The fact that this swings in and out means it will work with pretty much any trailer. I could have gone back a little bit further on this, because they say one to two inches from the nose, but when I was kind of test fitting it, I really wanted to make sure that I had enough space back here to get, I don't know, garden hoses, power cords, I don't know, covers, whatever behind here. So I wanted to have plenty of room that I could even reach my arm through it. 
So I left, I think, two and a half inch gap. And if you look at it, the weight is centered right on top of here. Of course, the weight transfers down there, but I could probably get up on there and jump on it with no problem. Now, of course, I have the issue of, of this. Now, in order to crank this up, I would have to do something like this. So it's still usable, but it's gonna be a pain. So I wanna get a power tongue for this anyway. Not a power tongue, I wanna get a power jack. Being in Texas, I don't think it's gonna rust too fast. If this was up in New England with all the salt in the winter, it would be pretty terrible, but I think I'm gonna get quite a few years out of this before I have to worry about the rust. I did have to drill these holes, so of course that breaks the powder coat and there's little chips and scratches. These are gonna get elongated and scratched from the ratchet straps. I like it, I like it. The Stromberg Carlson trailer tray is actually much better than I expected it to be. The instructions are terrible, but the rest of the product is fantastic. So if you're looking for a way to support your generator, or it's probably not an official use, but I could even stand on that as a platform. If you need a way to carry things, gas cans, firewood, it's really, really rugged. I'm really impressed with how strong it is. And the build quality overall is quite good. For me, I really needed a place to put my generator. I wanna either keep my propane tanks or put a mini split in there. I'm not sure what's coming next with that. That's all I have for you in this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'm gonna leave a link to all of the products that I used in this video down in the description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I do have a bunch of other projects coming up for the trailer. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.